Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to our full moon gathering. Continue now work with the cycle of meditation for the common good. Today is the last day of the five days period uh, for the Burger Solar Festival. And also today is the day of equinox. And thus we using this special moment uh, of sun entering the sign of Libra, signifying the change of seasons and giving us a special opportunity working in this full moon with energies of the cusp of two signs of Virgo and Libra. Today we're a small group and we invite subjectives all our group members who could not be with us today and we proceed. Tracy, you are muted. You broke up, so I didn't hear you, sorry. Um, thank you, Alexander. And welcome, everybody. So as we begin, we remind ourselves of our group purpose in this project, which is meditating to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for humanity and our planet. We do this by focusing the power of joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and our Earth's overall planetary life which will enable the recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles in all aspects of human life and activity, while magnetizing thought forms of solution and support for practical action that will lead to the advancement of humanity and planetary life. Let us now align with the sign of Libra, ever present on the Cardinal Cross. Evolve man enters, passing the test from Virgo with Christ consciousness stirring within his heart and mind. The focus now is on balancing the pair of opposites to create a dynamic equilibrium resulting in harmony. As we bring our individual notes together today through our alignment in this meditation, we create one sound, one harmonious vibration within the womb of silence. The effect of our group vibration sets into motion a magnetic force which energizes and attracts thought forms and states of being to support our intention today on the awareness and growth through archetypes for new governance. Alexander will now lead us in our meditation. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Tracy. Um, I hope my sound will be okay now. Let me know if there any inter interruption. So as we prepare to enter into the sign of Libra, 
we will use very special quality of this moment that combines qualities of both signs of Virgo, the mother, and Libra, the sign, sign of balance, harmony, and equilibrium. Last time we gathered it during the new moon time, the topic of archetype of new governance was one of the topics suggested to be used in our uh, new cycle. Cycle when we reflect on theme of clearing the house of politics and religion is one of the three themes that lead us to prepare us for reappearance of the Christ. So today, through our meditation, we will call the vision of what is the archetype of the new governance? Governance, how it will be manifested in the new civilization under the jurisdiction of the Christ and the planetary spiritual hierarchy. Let us begin. Align inwardly, bringing in harmony, all vehicles of your expression. becoming conscious of own soul. As souls we link together with the radiance of our hearts, and the light of our minds. We connect in the group heart center We visualize the column of bright lights group on the Karana.
in a group channel, we move upwards, aligning with the spiritual hierarchy. We project the light in line of light further, aligning with the center where the will of God is known, Shambhala. And we open our group consciousness to the inflowing energies of Ergo Libra Cusp. Sensing the special note of this transitional moment. the energy of the equinox.
we will focus in the group mind. Holding it receptive. We invoke the vision of the plan. Asking for guidance from the hierarchy for us to recognize the archetype of governance. As we hold our group mind open, we reflect on the following questions. What is the purpose of governance? What are the qualities of the ideal governance?
how governance under the guidance of the planetary spiritual hierarchy could look like. What could be the stages of transformation for the modern systems of governance? We collect all the impressions into the group chalice. Lifting it to the auspicious energies of Virgo Libra. And we ask our spiritual guides
to inspire us and guide us in our meditation in the following two weeks as we continue reflection on the topic of archetypes of the new governance. Preparing for the new moon meditation for the common good. And as we hold our chalice high, we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh.
Thank you, Alexander. We will now open the Community Impressions Board, which Alexander will put the link in the chat box. And we invite everyone to continue sharing impressions across the coming fortnight from this meditation. Uh, you can save the link that Alexander will give you. And if you lose it or you have anything you'd like to talk with us about, you are more than welcome to email us. Now over to you, Alexander. from the streets of meditation and as this last couple of minutes we call we held silence i muted myself as there was a very loud fire truck siren coming and that is one of the expressions of governance in one of its purest forms it services as fire brigades and any other essential services is that's definite part of the manifested governance how the common good of all could be met just was a response coming from outside from the street
So if anyone would like to share any impressions, please. There is a D DK says somewhere that the consciousness of a society can be estimated by its ability to deal with fire. And I've often thought about that. And we, we've got a lot of fire burning on, well, not so much just now, but we have had a lot of fire burning on the planet and i've been looking at our ability to to cope with this and some of it must be about being prepared for these eventualities and i think a lot of governments well they need to change us when you're asking the, the last question are, are to do with observation and the ability to see clearly i'm reminded of um, the uh, let the future stand revealed so a lot of a lot of ideas were moving around as we meditated thank you very much Thank you, Helen. Lynn, please unmute yourself. It just occurred to me that it, it seems quite stunning that um, we're in the sign of Libra, the balance of soul and personality life, and that we're um, um, on the cusp of the signs, Virgo and Libra, and that it's um, also the equinox. Um, it seems to put a strong emphasis on, on intelligent balance. And um, I think that can apply, you know, certainly in governing, um, that there be uh, an intelligent balance that's applied. I think it's uh, really significant that we're, that this is all coming together right now in our meditation. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Andrea, please unmute. Um, two, two aspects kept kind of swirling around like Helen said in mine and and one was continuing to feel that that Virgo energy of the maternal and that maternal governance you know it's governing in the same way as a very good mother mothers a a group of children and sees them all with all the potential that they have and sort of pushes them out of the door with support and love and compassion, recognizing that they are all individuals and celebrating that individuality, but being there in that supportive, believe in yourself sort of role. And the other thing that kept coming was e pluribus unum which is out of many one. And it truly, to me, speaks to what a truly united governance of all of us is about. That recognizing that extraordinary individuation and actually the fact that we are all connected so deeply at that soul level and that each of us as individuals is again to be celebrated and recognized for the 
or sometimes what we don't even realize is the really important part within that whole. That's all. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Um, I think Helen had a good point that governments spend too much time looking backwards and they need to be more forward thinking and planning for the future rather than keep dwelling on what's happened. And um, I think they need to um, involve people more in their decisions, not just keep riding roughshod over them as a lot of governments do. People have a lot of uh, knowledge between them and they should be allowed to take some part in the government. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. I would like to add to that about something that happened here in England today. One of our political parties, the leader of that party, uh, made a decision to change the method of uh, voting in a leader for that party. And quite recently, I mean, within few years it had changed from being a group vote in fact from the trade unions to a vote from every individual member and his decision today was to change back to the union block vote and not to have individuals adding their voice to the, who, who should be the leader and you can see how this person is concerned he didn't like um, the person who was voted in when all the members voted and <laughs> so he wants to change it back so that that can't happen again and it will will be him and it it really is almost unbelievable that, that leaders still behave like this. Like, I want to be leader. And what is going to make it best for me? And not what do all the members of my party want? What can I do for them? What is best for the country? So it, it is just interesting, there's an example there of going back from the people and doing just seems to me the opposite of what one would hope could be happening with a new governance. Here in the U.S., it seems that there is um, a great deal of fear um, in a number of people um, for the uh, downfall of the patriarchy. That um, it's, I guess it could be termed like the old television show, Father Knows Best. And it seems easy for people to uh, rationalize that um, if they lose power, that everything could fall apart. If they lose power, who knows what will happen, that the patriarchy must stand. And there is so much of this old boy network and um, it, it's just, it's, it's, um, it's sort of sad to watch. Um, and it isn't, I don't mean to say it's all a male thing either. I mean, there are many women who, who who sense that part of themselves, losing that part of themselves, the power of the uh, uh, the male power that has um, maybe 
dominated their lives in many ways or structured their lives or defined their lives. And um, um, it's, it's, I know it's part of the major shift, uh, but um, it, it's kind of difficult to watch, I'll say that. And, um, but yet I certainly feel like it's, it is all changing and that's where the fear comes from because that change is occurring as we, as we sit here, it's happening. So. I'd like to uh, add to what Helen was just uh, stating and, and Lynn also, and it kind of came to me during the meditation about uh, what can we do to transform and assist ourselves into the new governance. And what immediately came to me was, we have to get rid of the self-serving agendas and look at the whole. And I think with this fourth ray energy we're receiving right now, we're seeing a lot of the, uh, the conflicts that are going on because um, the agendas and the, the self-serving is not serving in, I don't know how to say it, in the, in the way that is most humanitarian and most um, respectful for all individuals, not just some, pushing through agendas that people want or, you know, knowing that, it, you know, it's creating chaos. There's a way of changing over different things. There's, there's a way of compromising as this is happening. Um, just, uh, just seeing so much, uh, from what Helen said going on in England and, and, uh, and I see a lot of that in the U S it's all self-serving and my way or the highway kind of thing, which is, uh, very interesting that this is all being brought out like almost like a pimple to a head because I think everybody is is seeing it and now the world is being affected by this selfish service as opposed to selfless service. And also, oops, and I was going to also add um, the new governance would be non oppressive. Uh, I, I see that as far as with the hierarchy, it would not be an oppressive or totalitarian type of governance. That's all. Thank you. Earlier today, I was reading a bit about the uh, Great Invocation. And it was saying that prior to the Great Invocation, the world prayer was, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And the one of the reasons for bringing the Great Invocation in was to get away from this old idea of Father doing best and the purpose of the invocation was to be inclusive so that yes you had the hierarchical structure but it was working with the lower levels with humanity and the the other kingdoms and that that idea seems to fit in with some of the conversation that's been going on as it well me this evening um and the other thing was in in the in the meditation um from the center where the will of god is known let purpose guide the little wills of men 
came to me. And I think that this is a, a lot of what we need to look for in the governance is someone who can see the will of God, can see the purpose, can see the plan, and knows how to manifest it in their little will as well. One of the questions that you asked, Alexander, at the beginning, um, um, for, or at least one of them that we thought of when the list was made before, it was what qualities to look for or how would we identify um, a, a spiritual leader. Um, and um, I had an experience with that that seems relevant um, when Obama was campaigning. He uh, had a rally in Cleveland, um, his first time that he went for president. And he, um, it was up by the lake, by Lake Erie, and he spoke to a large crowd. And my brother and I went up to just to hear what he had to say. And we went kind of late and we stood clear at the back edge of the crowd. But as soon as we were anywhere near, I could sense his aura. It was very powerful. Um, not that he's a perfect person or something like that, but you could just sense that positive energy from a great distance. And um, so I think that might be, uh, in a sense, a pract one practical answer to that question. Continuing with Trace, he shared uh, about the selflessness uh, of people in government or any government. I read uh, today also where DK talks about the unity of purpose for governments, and that was in relations to. Uh, different forms of governance and said that it doesn't matter the uh, through which form what format the governance takes as long as it take keeps the unity of purpose of focusing on well-being and evolution of all and so those two words really struck me that that well-being and evolution for all Um, I think, yes, uh, I'd put about that and I'd put um, that it has to be borne in mind that um, all involves all kingdoms because uh, they have to be treated in the right way so that they evolve. I think one more thing I'd like to add is also truth and transparency. I think that is going to be absolutely essential for future governance, uh, is truth and transparency on everything, um, so that you have your checks and balances, your Libra equilibrium there, not uh, So that the scale doesn't tilt one way or the other way, but stays in equilibrium. And I think truth and transparency we don't see in government. I just don't see it yet. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, and accountability. That would be the next one. Andrea, if you would like to share, please unmute yourself. This sort of just ties into what we're all talking about, but what Tracy sort of brought very clearly. And you know, we are looking at an Aquarian focus, which is a group orientation. And so self suddenly should not be part of this, that there is no selfish because in a group orientation, you have the opportunity to bring diversity within the wholeness of the group. And I think you eradicate what is so prevalent, which is this competitive nature within all of, all of humanity that is about winning and losing and being right and being wrong. And instead looking at that group orientation um, as an example of sharing and, and cooperation. And that's gonna take some extraordinary human beings that are very high-minded and who are infused with the will to good. I invite us to continue this reflection the next two weeks and uh, invite all of us to join the action area group. I don't think I need to talk much about it as we by now um, accustomed how um, the workflow of, our, of this project goes. So we invite you to let us know if you're interested in this topic reflecting on it and sharing further and um, we will coordinate with you and we'll continue this process mm -hmm. together and as of now the new moon meditation uh, is scheduled for october 8th there might be some adjustments depending on the availability of people who will volunteer to join the action area group And before we close, I want to say that this, with this cycle, we opened the second year, and in a way, it's the, uh, the new stage for this project, Meditation for the Common Good. A year ago, it was the first cycle, uh, starting with Libra. And as we enter the Libra now, it's the new beginning, the new phase, and Thank you for continuous interest and group work. And we are about 20 minutes, little less than 20 minutes away from the exact ingress uh, of sun into the sign of Libra. And so therefore the exact moment of equinox. And I want to offer this seeds thought for your meditation, this equinox. It was, it came as a synthesizing statement of a sharing, group sharing that happened yesterday. Um, it's a group that meets quarterly um, on the cardinal points, starting from as we were preparing for the festival week of the new group of world service in 2019 and so these groups continue meet, meeting and if you're interested in this group please let me know and you're welcome to join and so this is the thoughts that this group suggested may christ be born in the cave of the human heart through the sublime grace of the mother and the fiery touch of the father And this is the visual symbol that came 
as a result of the conversation of this group and uh, the moment of Virgo and Libra coming together at this equinox. So beautiful. Thank you, friends, and let's continue together. <laughs>